Welp, it missed the 20th anniversary by a couple of years, but finally, the Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection is here to celebrate the series 22nd anniversary. Leading up to launch, we've seen a number of exciting features announced for this collection, and based on that, there has been a sense in the community that the developers behind this collection is going all in, pulling out all the stops to make the fans happy. But how far did they really go? And is the Bannerwork Legacy Collection worth picking up today? Well, as Mega Man still says, legs go, Lan. Just to let you guys know, we are limited on how much of the Legacy Collection footage we are actually allowed to show during this embargo period. So at least 75% of what you're going to see here is from the Game Boy Advance games or just filler footage in general. Until we absolutely need to show something specific. Thank you in advance for your understanding. The collection drops in just a couple short days from the timing of this video, and I have had the privilege of playing for a few days by now, so I've been able to delve into a lot of different single player things that the community may be interested in. However, I am going to say that I did not get to play online at all, and that's just because, as you can probably imagine, during the review period, online was completely dead, and I could not find another person to play with, unfortunately. For that reason, we're just gonna do a bit of a preview today, just talking about some of my own findings throughout the entire collection and individual games as well. I've been able to play through Being 1, Being 3, and Being 6, since those were the most interesting games to me to hit up right away. I didn't get to get too much into the other games, so that'll be for another day. But I will say I've seen enough to get a gist of what all these games are going to be about anyways. So yep, today's video is just my single player impressions and some little things I could find out through the online menus. And we'll do a full review including online impressions down the line. I'm not even going to talk about the quality of the games themselves. I already got a video for that in the description below. It's called Which Mega Man Boundary Games Are Worth Playing? And maybe it's worth checking out if you just want to see which games are good or not. That all sound good? Alright, we're gonna go super duper rapid fire with this. So buckle up and legs go. Knowledge routine, set, execute. Every game in the collection has had their title screens remade in HD. And they all look absolutely stunning. The Chinese title screens are like a cool hybrid between English text and Japanese animation. Languages included are English, Japanese, simplified Chinese, and traditional Chinese. No other languages supported, unfortunately. Also, when you change your language, it changes all the text throughout the collection, even Mega Man's own voice. In English, Andrew Francis from the Mega Man NT Warrior English dub reprises his role, and his performance is a lot of fun for people who grew up with that anime. But I have bad news for people who prefer the Japanese and Chinese actors, because there are no subtitles once you change the language over, and changing the language is the only way to hear the other voices. So if you really want to play with Rockman's voice actor, I hope you like playing in Japanese. You can press L to make Mega Man stay stuff, and there is a lot of fun content to be had there, although there is a lot of repeat messages if you just keep mashing the button. There's not a huge pool of messages, but what is there? is a lot of fun with some funny references to things like cutting in on a screen dimming ship in PvP and reciting the battle routine set execute with him. There seems to be some time sensitive messages because depending on the time of day I would log in, mostly at night for me, Mega Man will say things like, aren't you tired? It's getting late. Oh, and of course, if anyone was curious about the quiz coon song that was revealed in the Japanese livestream, Andrew Francis does have his own version of it, that being the Mr. Quiz intro from the English version of the games. By the way, the era of P.E.T. is officially dead. P.E.T. was first heard in the N.T. Warrior anime, but here we have the N.T. Warrior Mega Man himself now saying PET instead of P.E.T. Every time I jack out, I think about how relaxing it is to be inside the pet. So I guess from now on, I gotta call it a pet. Other than the pre-order DLC, there is no additional skins for 3D Mega Man. At least, I haven't unlocked any yet. Also, the pool of messages that 3D Mega Man pulls from seems to differ between each volume, so 
play both volumes to hear all the messages. I should take this time to mention that yes, the collection is split up between two volumes. Volume 1 containing BN 1 through 3 and Volume 2 containing BN 4 through 6. No additional games or spin-offs. By the way, the volume split is still the case even if you get a physical version. Except both volumes will be on one cart. That being the case, when you get to the title theme of each of the volumes, in Volume 1, it's an electronic remix of the EXE 1 title theme, and Volume 2 is another electronic mix of the EXE 4 theme. Getting into the options, you can actually mute the background music and sound effects separately, which is great news for content creators or anyone that just wants to grind or battle to their own playlist of music. Overall, throughout the collection, the controls feel fine. I didn't notice any input delay, and it didn't feel like emulation. However, the actual control options aren't nearly as customizable as previous collections. There are only three types of control schemes that only change the face buttons, A, B, B, A for your Mega Buster and selecting chips, or A and X on an Xbox controller, mimicking a 2D action platformer style. The good news is that on the Steam version, which I reviewed, there is indeed keyboard support after all, and you can bind any key to any action. Unfortunately, there is no dedicated button for using a shield, anti-damage, or any other left and B command. You will still have to do all of those manually. Main menu and network menu controls cannot be changed unless you are using a keyboard. On the collection menu, when you have a save file for a game, a message showing playing will appear underneath the game. And if you have cleared the final boss of that game, the message will change to clear. Mega Man will even audibly congratulate the player for clearing a specific game with a fist bump. It's really cool. As for how the Steam version runs, everything played generally fine. However, I will say that a handful of times, the game did freeze up for a few seconds and then went back to normal afterwards. It was nothing game breaking, but definitely a small annoyance every once in a while. Also, I did in fact test the game on my Steam Deck. Again, the game runs great there. When you are in actual gameplay, there are no slowdowns and I didn't experience the same freezing issue on Steam Deck. So that's great. The only issue I found was that on the title screen for the collection itself, the background will be frozen up instead of moving. So that's about it. Battle Network Legacy Collection is 100% playable on Steam Deck. Getting into gameplay notes that affect every game in the collection. Unfortunately, Across the board, the English translation is 100% identical to the original games. That means, even for games like BN4, all the typos, mugshot errors, crude humor, and all are still there and intact for all games. Is it a case of lazy devs, or are they preserving the memes and memories for future generations? Whichever you may believe, you are still going to get the There's so many electrical store, and the legs go, land. They didn't even bother to fix the heel navy misspelling in Battle Network 4. The only misspelling they did fix was the Z Saber battle chip, which used to have a V over the B, but now it's been fixed. However, in the description for the Z Saber battle chip, it still says Repleroid in there instead of Reploid. Well, they were so close, but no cigar. But other than that, if you have played these games before, You've already read all the dialogue because it is exactly the same. The only new translation in this collection has to do with the Boktai scenario in BN6. And that is out of necessity because for the first time in series history, every game in this collection is based on the Japanese versions. That means all Japanese exclusive content is now available in the West for the first time because you can't even go back and play the original US release even if you wanted to. What this collection does is unifies every language into one singular version to the point that say I played through BN3 Blue, if I switch languages and start playing EXE3 Black, my save file will still be there. And that just goes to show that everything is unified, everything shares one save file because it's literally one version of the game. Speaking of text, the high resolution font to me is not so great, at least in English. I think it looks fine in the Japanese and Chinese fonts because they adhere more to the original pixel graphics. The font is a bit different from game to game, 
Some games will have different spacing after commas than others. So overall, I didn't like the font too much in BN6, but in games like BN4, I actually don't hate it that much. Although it can be jarring playing with all these pixel graphics next to this super high resolution font. And unfortunately you cannot change the font at all, so you're pretty much stuck with it unless someone makes their own mod. Continuing the graphics discussion, the smoothing filter that has been included in every legacy collection so far, it's still not great. I turn that off immediately. When a button prop appears in game or in dialogue, the button will correspond to the controller and button layout that you are using. Also, the battle start and enemy deleted message animations are a bit smoother than in the original games. I think they even play out a little bit faster too, which threw me off. Now, when it comes to the audio design, I noticed that there is a noticeable 1 second delay between when a battle starts and when the music actually kicks in. So for about a second or so, you have a little bit of silence as the enemies start spawning in on the field, which is a bit jarring coming from the original. Also, when you navigate through a different area in the overworld that has a different music track, there will be a fade effect applied, so you hear the music volume go down and then back up. Anyway, because of this one second delay with the music starting up, when you win an event battle, you no longer get to hear the full short version of the victory jingle. It gets cut off right before the end. And by the way, Buster Max Mode, which allows your Mega Buster to pretty much one-shot anything because it adds a x100 multiplier to your normal shots. Keep in mind that's not charge shots. Yeah, that mode has been a blessing for me actually getting through these games faster. Buster Max is going to be pretty dang cool for casual speedrun. By the way, I have confirmed that Buster Max mode does not disable the ability to earn achievements. So, if you want to, cheese away. It literally does not matter. And on the topic of achievements, I can confirm that there are no online battle specific achievements. So, if you want to platinum this collection and you don't want to mess up online, the good news is you don't have to. If you want to get to Omega rank in ranked PvP, that is purely for bragging rights. Now, Buster Max is absolutely amazing, not only for newcomers that just want to experience the story, but for veterans as well that just wants to get grinding done faster and, well, get to PvP faster. However, that is the only quality of life feature you're going to find in this collection. There are no save stating, there's no fast forward option, which I would have liked to see. And there is no toggle for random encounters either. With the exception of Buster Max mode, these games are presented literally as they originally were. Except, you know, if everything was based on the Japanese version to begin with. And yeah, that may annoy some people. Oh, yeah, and you can't skip tutorial battles in any of the games. Sorry. Alright, let's talk about download chips real quick. In case you forgot which chips are download chips for each title, here's the list of them on screen right now. You can obtain each of these download chips a total of one time per save file per version. So you can get it again in each of the versions. And if you ever delete your save file, you can obtain it again that way too. But you're only going to get that one copy because you can't trade the download chips to other people anyways. Now, I do have some bad news to deliver to the competitive community specifically because in online net battles, it looks like that all of the download chips are legal for online play. That includes Double Beast and BN6. Which is bad because Double Beast is a free 420 damage for doing nothing but pressing the A button. You don't even have to aim it. And it's a multi-hitting chip so it goes through Mega Man's undershirt ability. So basically there's no reason not to run that chip in your folder now. The only exception to this rule for the download chips is that in Battle Network 2, they made it so in online play, you can only have one gospel chip in your folder. That doesn't do a whole lot because the Darkness program advance will still be available, you'll just have a harder time drawing it. But otherwise, from what we're seeing, there are no other ban lists or restrictions on chip usage throughout the entire collection. So yeah, uh, PvP is gonna be quite the wild adventure. This ain't tournament rules, this is a street fight out here, and ranked PvP is going to be every net battler for themselves, which is obviously not ideal. Speaking about the patch cards, in case you don't know what they do, 
They contain things like the mod cards that enhance Mega Man's abilities or change his charge shot and things like that. Item cards that give you zinny, bug frags, and a bunch of battle chips, including all of the version exclusive Navi chips for BN4 through 6. So for those games, you don't even have to trade for those Navi chips, unless you want multiple copies of them, of course. There's also the special chips, which is where you get the Boktai cards for BN6, or your second copy of Z Saber, aside from the Lotto code in BN4. However, in that special section, I found nothing about the SP Link Navis in BN6. But there is an interesting thing in the event section for BN6, which gives you all the e-reader exclusive job requests. And that's because, since we're dealing with the Japanese version, we have to use the e-reader to get those last 10 job requests that were otherwise available baked in in the US version. Anyway, the event cards in there actually do make a reference to the infamous Anubis lockout, which basically sopped off your game if you do the self-research request, but you haven't gotten the Anubis chip yet. Because the Anubis chip is in Graveyard 2, and to get the Graveyard 2, you need all the Mega chips, which will require all the Proto Man chips, and you can't fight Proto Man SP until you do most of the job requests. But you can only do one request at a time, so if you don't have all the Proto Man chips before accepting that request, you could potentially soft lock your game. Thankfully, there is a patch card available called Chod's Mission that gives you all those Proto Man chips, anyways, and the patch cards in the Banner Legacy Collection actually makes a reference to this, telling the player to use that child's mission card if they ever get stuck. Pretty interesting that they outright acknowledge the oversight like that. Getting into the gallery section, the art gallery has artwork from all six games, which is pretty cool to look at, though I will say the artwork isn't super high res. Like it's HD, but you'll see some fuzziness if you zoom in. Also, I didn't see anything in the gallery that could hint at a future collection or game in general. Well, except for Star Force, I guess, because in the Mystery Data section, they have all the artwork for the spin-off titles, and also merchandise and special events that were only in Japan, like the Hanya Shiki Mission event. But as for the spin-off games, I'm talking about Battleship Challenge, EXE 4.5, Operate Shooting Star, which is where all the Star Force art comes from. It's kind of weird seeing Geo by himself in a couple of the artworks there. Maybe that's your hint towards the Star Force Legacy Collection. Other spin-off artworks you get include actually Legend of Network and Phantom of Network, the two mobile games that have now, for all intents and purposes, been lost to time. However, it should be said, although the artwork is there, these games are not playable in the Legacy Collection. Not even Operate Shooting Star. Heading over to the music player, you can listen to soundtracks from all six games. However, in the B and 6 soundtrack, they are missing the crossover battle music, which crossover battles are not a thing in Legacy Collection since he had to connect to a Boktai game anyway, but it would have been nice to at least have the crossover battle music in there. I really like that one. A more glaring omission, at least in my review copy, is that of all the Legacy Collection specific music, there's only one actually available in the music player, not including the DLC tracks. And that's just the title screen music. What happened to all the remixes that were in the trailers up to now? I really like those. Why can't I listen to them? I haven't even heard those remixes in game yet. Although, to be fair, that's because I haven't played online yet. But yeah, it's kind of weird. Unless there's a day one patch on the way. That's a big bummer that you can't really listen to all the other Legacy Collection soundtracks until you buy the physical soundtrack later on, I guess. And the last overall game note I have is that the achievements don't unlock any in-game content since the patch cards are all available from the start. So let's talk about online real quick. Like I said, I didn't actually get to play online at all, but I was able to find out a couple things just from navigating the menus and playing around with that. So first of all, when you are trading online, like in the original games, you can still offer to trade nothing in exchange for another chip. So, yeah, even online, you can literally tell somebody, Hey, you know, that's a nice Muramasa you got there. It would be pretty cool if you could give you that for free. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how trading is going to go because 
there's no option in the messages to even tell someone else what chip you're looking for. So all you can really do is either offer up a chip that you want to trade or connect as a guest and find another host to see what chip they got so you can offer up your own. So basically you're just hoping to get a good deal but you don't actually know what to expect and you can't tell someone what ship you want unless you're just trading privately with your friends. So I don't know, early on, without actually trying it myself, trading looks like it might be a big bust, at least with randoms. At the very least, when you're trading, you can look at all the high resolution ship artwork, and yeah, they look so crisp and nice, but unfortunately, that's the only place you can see that artwork. There's not even a section in the gallery for the battle chip art, and you can't see them in game either, which I would love to see. It's really a big bummer that they didn't go ahead and let us use the high resolution chip art in game at least. And well, this online section is going to be a long string of big bummers because here's another one. You cannot access the multiplayer features while operating a Link Navi. Period. Like if you're controlling a Link Navi in BN6 and you try to go to the network menu, the game will tell you, no, that is not allowed. That is illegal, sir. You need to jack out and then try again to play online. And I guess on top of that, I'll go ahead and say I played through being 6 and I could find nothing, absolutely nothing about the SP Link Navis. Not even the Navi change table in Tab Shop is even there at any point in the game. Can't do anything with it at all. So that just tells me that it's true, B-Skate support is not in Bound Network Legacy Collection. It's still unknown if you could even get the B-Skate icon on the title screen, but if you can't even do the SP Link Navis, probably not. That's gonna be gone forever. Now here's a quirk that I figured out by playing around with the menus. So if your current equipped folder is illegal for regular rules, but it's legal for patch card play, for example, if you have multiple gigachips in your folder because of a patch card ability, the game won't let you participate in online battles until you either select patch card rules or edit your folder to take out those extra gigachips so you can play in standard rules again. So yeah, the game does account for the difference between patch cards and no patch cards. Now, there has been questions from people if you could actually make an online exclusive folder and Mega Man setup. The answer is no. Online battles, all they do is take your current equipped folder, Navica setup and style and just takes you into the battle from there. So yeah, there are no online specific folders, Navicust, or style changes that you can set. You're going to have to grind and edit your folder manually every single time you want to change things up. Which yeah, again, it's not ideal. There's also been a question about spectating matches. I found no options for that, so I assume that's a no. You can, however, do private battles of friends by using a room code and up to 15 people can join your room, so that would be pretty nice for doing live streams or tournaments. And on the Switch version only, no not even on the Steam Deck, but a Switch only, you can perform local trades and battles of another user or even yourself if you have another Switch and a copy of the collection. However, again, the biggest kicker about the online in general is that there is no crossplay and there is no cross saves between the three different versions, that being Switch, Steam, and PlayStation. So basically, you're taking the already small Battle Network community and splitting that up three ways. So if you really want to net battle with your friends, you gotta make absolutely certain that they have the same console or PC that you do. Because if I'm playing on Steam and you're playing on Switch, we cannot play together, period. I know it sucks. It really does. But guys, with some of the general notes out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty specific game notes. You ready? Legs go. Alright, Bound Network 1. Yes, this is the Game Boy Advance version through and through. This is not the Operate Shooting Star version. And that means all this quality of life improvements and extra content are not here in the slightest. Even the Electman scenario still makes you recharge your batteries. You can't run from battles and all that. It really sucks. But yep, it's BN1 alright, on the GBA. Only real difference you'll find is that, like in the original Japanese version, the elemental icon for new element ships has a slash instead of the usual dot found in the other English releases. There's also a little translation quirk 
where area grab is called steel in Banner Rook 1, but then those are named to area grab later in the series. Yeah, it's still called steel in the Legacy Collection. Now, I did say earlier that all the translations are 100% identical to the original English translation. And that does mean typos such as load chod is still here and intact. And I guess they changed literally nothing because you could still save scum mystery data drops by reloading a save until you get the drop you want. That should work for B1 and 2, very nice. Something that ain't very nice is, well, something I did for this review period is try to do some glitch hunting. Since I'm a man trying to deliver what the people want, I tried out some infamous glitches and exploits throughout the series to see what happens. And one of those is in fact the famous BN1 World 3 slash Final Boss Skip. An exploit that was found by BN1 speedrunners that essentially skips most of the World 3 castle and gets you right to the ending credits. Well, there is always room for error, but I am at least 99% sure I performed the skip exactly as the videos online do, and you know, it didn't work. I was not able to skip to the ending credits. I even tried it a few times and nope, it didn't happen. So until someone smarter than me tries it, I'm going to say right here, being one final boss skip, it's been patched in Legacy Collection. They missed it in Operate Shooting Star because it still works there too, but nope, they finally caught wind of it. <laughs> as for Bound Network 2, yes, dialogue is still all the same, the Whiskey Man's still there, Miss Millions being Miss Millions is still there, everyone being crude, all the cultural depictions, yeah, it's still the same. Don't believe me? Capcom included a disclaimer when you boot up the collection, warning people about insensitive content and cultural depictions in the contents of the Legacy Collection, just assuring everybody that Capcom is indeed inclusive and they totally didn't mean anything bad about any of the crude stuff you're gonna find in the games. Honestly, it's kind of amazing that they were so adamant about not changing anything that they had to put a disclaimer like that. Moving on. Once again, since we are dealing with the Japanese version of BN2, that means we get the Japanese version of the Jack In animation which is different from the US release. Also, I know everyone's been asking about the Retro Trader, so here's the verdict. It looks like the Retro Trader has been removed entirely from BN2, and that's because it required connecting to BN1, and it would be hard to do that in the collection anyway, so it makes sense. But that does mean that a lot of the codes for those BN1 ships are inaccessible in the Legacy Collection. The last note I have, is a thing I noticed throughout all the games, but definitely in BN2, where I was able to position land just right to where the conductor NPC overlaps land's head, makes it look like he's standing on top. It's a bit funny, and maybe has to do with the engine that the game is running on, but thought I pointed out. Now, Battery 3 is a bit interesting again because, once again, it's the Japanese version. You know what that means? Jack In and Navi customizer animations that were previously cut from the Western releases have been restored in BN3, the English version for the first time. That is really awesome. And now here's a little bit of a downer, or maybe it's a good thing for some of us memers, but uh, in case you were hoping Japan Man would go back to Yamato Man in the Legacy Collection, no, uh, he's still Japan Man. <laughs> oh my goodness. And speaking of dialogue, I noticed that in some of the early dialogue when you start the game, there's some grammatical errors, like periods or commas being replaced by quotation marks. That was kind of weird. When it came to getting a style change, in this case I went for custom style because reasons, I can happily report that Buster Max mode, which I abused the heck out of for this game, did not screw me over with getting custom style. Even if you are using your Buster a lot, as long as you perform your actions enough for that specific style, you should be able to get enough points to override the gut style point. By the way, for styles, you still only get that one slot in BN3, and the method for obtaining and grinding for styles in their programs is still the same as ever. Flame Man is still abbreviated to Flam Man in dialogue, so they didn't do anything about the weird abbreviations. To end off the BN3 section, I did some glitch hunting again. Alright, so the first glitch I tried was the shake glitch. Basically, if you throw a shake chip, 
and then you purposely get damaged so you get out of the throwing animation and then use a chip like attack plus 10 before the shake actually hits the ground that will cause the shake to power up to as much as 10,000 damage so you can one shot basically anything with this chip using the glitch and guess what guys it works I was able to defeat bubble man in one shot using the shake glitch absolutely fantastic next I tried a sequence break that was only in the original Japanese version and since it's a Japanese version may as well give it a shot so in that version you could sequence break the whole ranked quest part of the story by reading Copyman's BBS message calling Mega Man out to Undernet 4 but instead of doing that you go straight to Bull Man or Mist Man and just fight them for rank 2 skipping that entire Copyman encounter. I did try it but it did not work for me so that sequence break seems to not be possible in Legacy Collection. Lastly, oh man. After Gucci said he fixed the post game of being 6 with the music, I was hoping they'd do this for being 3 at least, but they didn't. But just like in the original, the internet colors are going to remain gray and dull forever after starting the end game, even after you roll the credits. Man, that's a bummer. The net looks so weird. Oh, Alpha. Hold on. We got one more surprise for BN3. So, it took me all this time to do most of the post game through Dark Man, through Japan Man, getting all the Navi friends, going through the virus gauntlets to get Hub Batch, maxing out my custom style on the way too, but I've done it. I've tested the 11th chip glitch. What is the 11th chip glitch, you may ask? Well, it was an infamous glitch that, by the way, you could take into PvP that when set up right, would allow you to use the second chip slot in your folder basically every turn. One of the famous uses of this glitch was setting up the plant man lock in PvP. You would set folder back as your second slot, perform the 11th chip glitch. Now you can use folder back every turn to recycle your plant mans every turn and just keep spamming plant mans to win. Your opponent can't do anything about it, plant man locks them in place. Anyway, what's the verdict? Are we going to have to deal with plant man locks in PvP? Welp, I got this far and tested it and I found it does not work. Again, there's always a chance of doing something wrong, but I'm pretty sure I got custom plus six. I selected the chip, went to the tip slot, pressed right, and it goes right to the OK button. So it looks to me that the love chip glitch has been patched in Bound Network Legacy Collection. And yeah, I gotta say, for PvP at least, that's pretty big. It's not going to make the Plantman lock go away entirely, but it may make it ever so slightly less consistent. All we need now is to make Folder Back a one-time use in PvP. By the way, Folder Back is still infinite use in single player because it recycles itself. That doesn't mean it won't be different in online, but we'll have to wait and find out. I will never call Bean 3 balanced despite this, but Hey, there's one last thing to worry about. Alrighty, it's everybody's favorite game, BN4. Like I said, apparently they just did not care enough to fix any of the typos, and misspellings, and errors in the dialogue of BN4. So for anyone like me who loves the memes, oh it's still here. It's still here for generations upon generations to enjoy. And they did fix the saber like I said, but Repeloid is still there. And from what I played, I noticed no other changes about the game itself, such as in Shade Man scenario with the Cyber Bats, they still do not disable the encounters while the sonar machine is turned on, you're trying to chase down the bats, so that's still annoying. Other than that, being 4 is like 100% identical to how it was, but at least you can do free tournaments now. Thanks to the online features, indeed, including version battles and the wait room list so you can do the free tournaments for the secret chips. That'll be fun. Getting into Bound Network 5 now. So, yeah, sorry, but no content from Double Team DS. That means no party battle system, no network features, and there's no Soul Cross either. There's not even a patch card for Soul Cross. However, you do have Base Cross as part of the patch card, and that means you get the exclusive Base Double X fights as well. Awesome. Oh, yeah. So, even though patch cards are in the collection, there is no toy peripheral support, so that means 
for the title screen of being 5, they no longer have to check for that peripheral. So, you'll see the press start immediately when the title screen comes up. Unlike in the original, when you had to wait just a little bit to see that pop up. It's cool to see that change finally. And yeah, once again, the script is copy pasted over. Typos such as Chod and Barrel saying, Defeating Ned was the one chance we have at saving me! Yeah, it's, it's still there. <laughs> Lan is still going to jack into that squirrel, that's what it takes. Also, in the Japanese version of EXE5, there is an additional ship comp, ship comp 1 precisely, that was cut from the English releases, and that eliminated a location where the Thunder L chip could drop. But, since this is the Japanese version we're talking about, that ship comp 1 is back in Legacy Collection. And as part of the fact that Boktai is indeed here to stay in the Legacy Collection, Bound Over 6. This is the game I spent the most time with because there's a lot of stuff I wanted to find out. So like I said, the event cards actually mention the Anubis lock, telling the player they need to access Graveyard 1 or use the Chaw's Mission item card to get out of the soft lock. Since BN6 is the Japanese version, we now have those info boards that provide the maps for each of the game's areas back in BN6. And that includes the Japanese exclusive battle chips, like the Falzar and Gregar Giga chips. Those are download chips anyways, but hey, we got them, even the Django battle chip. Oh, and the count too! The Boktai Trader where you turn in your crossover points, which by the way you earn from doing ranked battles, in order to get those Boktai exclusive chips, is available from the start. Yeah, you can do the whole Boktai scenario now, and guess what? Unlike the rest of the collection, Boktai scenario is actually an all new translation. I even compared this official translation to the fan translation that's out there, and actually it does not match up at all, so yeah, this is a 100% new official from Capcom translation, and you can tell because there's still a typo. <laughs> Here we are in 2023, they're still making typos, but yeah, if you talk to Django after the first encounter with the Count, he will say, Mega Man, you called for Otenko! Wait, hold on Django, I didn't even rescue Otenko yet, what do you mean? And there's another one where Django actually refers to the Count as Zap. Wait a minute, did the translators actually mix up Boktai's Count with Battle Network's Count Zap? No way. There's, there's no way. <laughs> also, I know I've been glitch hunting throughout this whole review, but I did not expect to find a glitch purely by accident. So, in the first encounter with the Count, I accidentally used a sword chip on the same frame that the game transitioned to the end battle cutscene. But when I did that, I accidentally spawned another copy of Mega Man and the Count. And the battle was still raging on, throughout the cutscene. So you basically got the cutscene Mega Man encount and the battle Mega Man encount. That definitely threw me for a loop when I did it by accident. The timing is a little tight on recreating this glitch, but it's definitely possible. And it is haha -ha funny. And yeah, on that note with the Boktai snarl and everything, yep, all of the exclusive Japanese areas are back. Internet 3, Immortal Area, Graveyard 1, they're back baby. And yeah, that does change some things around like the chip distribution throughout the game and the location of Beast Mega Man SP. So keep that in mind when you're playing and you're using a US version guide for some reason. Because there are some differences. Now here's another really cool change that's been documented already from the trailers, but I'm here to confirm that yes, the era of Spoutman is over. In game, he is now Aquaman through and through, all the way through his name. The cross is named Aqua Cross. Even when you go to the cross menu, it says Aqua right there. By the way, check out that cross menu with the whole redrawn HD mug shots for all the navvies. Isn't that so cool? I was mind blown when I saw that. Why does Aquaman look like he's from a CGI film? I don't know, but that's awesome. And even the battle trips are Aquaman. So yeah, Spoutman, who that? I don't know him. What? He's in the manual? Oh, don't worry about it. He can't hurt you. However, there is somebody's name that hasn't been changed, and that is Mr. Erase Man. Nope, he ain't gonna get changed to Killer Man anytime soon. That's kind of hardcore, man. 
but Race Man it is, and to be honest, I prefer that name anyway. The speedrunning trick in the Aquarium Comp scenario involving switching between Lynn and Mega to reset the random encounter timer still works. The Nabby Change's table in the Asterland shop still doesn't do anything even after beating the game, so there is no perceivable way to upgrade a Nabby to their SP version. So I gotta say, there's definitely no Beastgate support, which is unfortunate, I was really hoping for that. I want Leak Nabby meta, Capcom, give it to me. Speaking of Buster Max, Buster Max actually does affect things like Base Cross's Shooting Buster, well when you use the patch card. The actual design of Mega Man doesn't change when you use the Base Cross card. Eguchi said that they wanted to match it with BN5, but we're not able to. But anyway, Buster Max works with that, and it also works with the Beast Busters. So if you ever want a fight to end in a nanosecond, go beast out with Buster Max on and you're on your way. So on my glitch hunting, I also tried the tornado plus chip glitch, which basically when you use a tornado chip with a white capsule, it's supposed to paralyze over an elemental panel, but in the Japanese version of EXE 6, that would actually not make them pair it, but would instead double your damage. So I uh, gave it a shot, as you can see, and it worked as intended. Aquaman got parried, so I guess that one's been patched, unless I did something wrong. Finally, there was a B and 6 related glitch that I was asked to look into, and that was the Slash glitch. Basically, if you buffer your chip charge in Slash Cross, you can release the charge button at the same time you activate the custom screen into the next turn, select a different chip, then Slash Cross would try to use that chip for the chip charge instead, producing a number of very interesting effects. The major concern is if he use it with certain chips like Big Hook, it would cause slowdown in the game and desync PvP. And that wouldn't be good, would it? So I tested it out and I could be doing something wrong, but I could not recreate the glitch myself. The chip charge attack would either go through normally, or I would just lose the charge entirely and nothing happens. So there you go, Slash Glitch may have been fixed too. And finally, in being 6, I am here to report our man Mr. Famous Aguchi kept his word. Oh yes he did, because the era of listening to the panic music in the post game of EXE 6 is no more. The soundtrack is back, yes. BN6 has a soundtrack again. Don't believe me? Listen for yourself! And with that, that's pretty much everything I've found out about the Legacy Collection in the short time I've been able to play before Embargo. Like I said, I was not able to play online, so my full impressions on that will come at a later date along with a full review in general. Anyways, I hope the information I've been able to present today has been interesting, and I'd like to thank all of you for watching. Stay tuned to Shadowx EX for all things Mega Man, especially Mega Man Banner Legacy Collection, because we're going to be hitting that thing HARD coming up. Stay tuned for sure. And until then, rock on everybody. And for anyone experiencing Bound Network this week, either once again or for the first time, I hope you all have a great time. So, let's end this off the only way we know how. Jack in, Mega Man, execute!